Legacy Precious Metals is the company that I trust to give you good and patient counsel for investing in your retirement. The Biden administration has caused a financial crisis and they have no clue how to fix it. Oil prices have skyrocketed and when oil prices go up, not only do your expenses go up, but the cost of transportation and shipping spikes, leading the prices of goods to rise. And when and we are already seeing record inflation. That's the last thing that we need. Our economy is in trouble and you need to take steps to protect yourself. If all your money is tied up in stocks, bonds, and traditional markets, you may be vulnerable. So gold is one of the very best ways to protect your retirement. No matter what happens, you own your own gold. It's real, it's physical, and it's always been valuable since the dawn of time. Call Legacy Precious Metals today at 866-528-1903 or visit them online at LegacyPMInvestments.com. That's LegacyPMInvestments.com where you can download the free investor's guide. You can also go to my Facebook page, Jenna Ellis. I am a public figure on Facebook and I just posted yesterday a really great interview with the president of Legacy Precious Metals who is discussing why you need to start your retirement account even if you're in your your 20s or 30s. There is always a great time to protect your retirement and invest just like you want to protect your health over the long term. So go to Legacy Precious Metals at LegacyPMInvestments.com or call 866-528-1903. As a constitutional law attorney, former senior legal advisor and personal counsel to President Donald J. Trump, Jenna Ellis believes in the rule of law and the importance of integrity in our elections. And she's ready to tackle the big cultural and legal issues facing America. This is The Jenna Ellis Show. Here is your host, Jenna Ellis. And welcome, everybody, to the Jenna Ellis podcast. Uh, here's some breaking news for you. Uh, I'm not Jenna Ellis. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I want to apologize from uh, the looks department, from the brain department, but I am here. And my name is David Brody. I'm the chief political analyst for CBN News. I'm also a host of the Water Cooler on Real America's Voice. Uh, I am living and breathing, and I have oxygen. So, hey, it may be a downgrade, but at least I've got a breath in my lungs, which, by the way, here's a transition to start with the podcast uh, today. Donald Trump uh, surely has some breath in his lungs because I tell you what, uh, well, obviously we know I've got a primo spot today because I'm I'm uh, filling in the day after Donald Trump's announcement. And boy, uh, it, it was quite the announcement. Now, it did not have the gold escalator. And I'm going to be honest with you, I was a bit disappointed that there was no gold escalator. Then again, everything else is gold down at Mar-a-Lago, but apparently they couldn't ship in an escalator uh, down there. But anyhow, uh, that aside, look, so he's in. Uh, and where do we even begin? There's so much to unpack. Uh, let's just start with this. You've got uh, the GOP mega donors. You've got uh, News Corps, which, of course, is Murdoch backed. Uh, you got the New York Post and Fox News and Wall Street Journal. Um, you've got the GOP establishment, or we should just call them the elites. It's like a uh, new rock band, the elites, Mitch McConnell and the elites, like a vault. I don't want to start with that. But anyhow, uh, we've got all of them against Donald Trump. So, uh, well, look at here. Uh, 2016, he was the underdog. And here we are again in 2022 as he runs in 2024 and he's the underdog again. That's exactly where he likes it. So look, I mean, I think he's in a pretty good position as it relates to the the specific um, situation with uh, being the underdog. Now, look, there's a lot of factors here, and I can go through all of them, and we can get into DeSantis, and we can get into, uh, you know, uh, some of the Republicans coming after him. But but look, here's what I've learned, and, and I should probably give you a little background on my situation. I, I have known Donald Trump for almost 15 years, did an interview with him back around 2011 or so. So it's been about 12, 13 years or so done about 30 interviews with him. Um, and I can tell you this, and I think this should come as no surprise to anybody. Don't un underestimate Donald Trump. I mean, just don't, just don't. Um, he's in that position as an underdog, but it's more than just that. Um, we are in hellish times right now in America. And I don't think I need to tell you that, right? We've got a culture that's 180, totally upside down. Um, we, we've got a, uh, a situation where uh, in essence, good is called evil and evil is called good. And we are we are in a situation now where uh, weakness is not required by any politician. And Donald Trump is the last thing from weakness. And look, 
th- th- this idea that's going around right now that we need some sort of unity president or unity candidate or a kumbaya president and all that, you know, give, give me a colossal break. Okay, give me a colossal break. We're not in those times. And this idea that, you, and you heard Chuck Schumer the other day saying, oh, we want to work with Republicans across the aisle. No, they don't. No, they don't. They would like some cultural Marxism, uh, a double scoop of that, actually a triple scoop of that uh, right here in America. So look, th- this is not a time for unity, sadly. And, and it pains me to say that. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I'd love unity. I'd love to find out, you know, where's Rodney King? Can't we just all get along? And wait, wasn't Joe Biden supposed to bring unity? I'm sorry, my bad. Did I miss that somewhere? Anyhow. The point simply is that, uh, look, we are in very, very turbulent times in America and we need a fighter. OK, these times require a fighter. Uh, these times require a muckraker. And here is Donald Trump, warts and all. And look, I don't really care if uh, you, you really don't like him or he's done, gotten some mean tweets or he's done this or he's done that. Yeah. You know, this just in. He's not a perfect person. We know that. Uh, and yes, this just in. Uh, he uh, has a healthy ego. And he loves himself quite o- quite often and quite a bit, but he loves America more. And we've seen that. And now he runs with uh, results. He also runs uh, on this idea that, let's be honest, he's running against Biden. OK, and, and Biden should be a bingo caller somewhere or playing shuffleboard in North Miami Beach. I mean, listen, no disrespect to anybody in North Miami Beach or anybody in a senior home. God bless the seniors or, as they say in the South, bless their heart. But Joe Biden, president of the United States, come on, we've seen what he's done. So he's basically a shuffleboard bingo caller at this point. Uh, and so if Biden runs, and that's a big if at this point, we'll see. I'm sure the Democrats want him out. There's no doubt about it. But let's say Biden does run and Trump's the nominee and it's Biden's record versus Trump's record and it's Biden versus Trump. I mean, folks, I'm not a Democrat, this just in, but that's no contest. That's no contest. And oh, by the way, Donald Trump got 11 million more votes last time he ran. And now you're telling me after what Biden just did for two plus years and soon to be four years, you're telling me that that's going to play in 2024? I don't think so. So look, there's all of that to unpack. And and there's so much more. There's the News Corps situation. And this is going to be a challenge for Trump. All right. Rupert Murdoch, doesn't want to see Trump anywhere near the White House. Uh, he wants him pretty much along with Peter Pan in Never Never Land. They want to get him out of there. Uh, and so News Corp, as you know, controls uh, not just Fox News, but the Wall Street Journal and the New York Post, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't know if you saw the New York Post headline today, but literally they had a, a headline about something else, had nothing to do with Trump. And then at the bottom of their cover page, the bottom of the cover page, this is what it said, Florida man makes announcement. That's from the conservative New York Post, owned by Rupert Murdoch and his News Corp corporation that want nothing to do with Trump. Florida man makes announcement. And by the way, then they put page 26, a little blurb. This is what Trump is up against. He's up against Fox News, which really, in essence, wants to crown DeSantis right now if they could. They got the New York Post writing headlines like that. So the Wall Street Journal, you, I can go on all, on all day about the Wall Street Journal and problems there. So Trump is up against that. He's also up against GOP mega donors, as we talked about at the top of the podcast. Uh, you know, there's some that are saying no more Trump. But look, that makes me think about, well, what about Ron DeSantis? Because there's been so much talk about Ron DeSantis. And can we just like put a sock in all of this DeSantis talk? And I understand we're not going to be able to put a sock in the DeSantis talk. Uh, and I understand. Let me be clear. I understand on paper that Ron DeSantis, it would make sense for him to run, right? I mean, he just came off this record-breaking, amazing victory over Charlie Crist. Well, he could vault with Charlie Crist, but whatever. He can't, he, he had a great victory in Florida. Uh, rock-ribbed conservative, uh, in your face, alpha male. He's got the whole package. Don't get me wrong. I don't want anybody to interpret it any other way than that. But they need him in Florida. Okay, Donald Trump was done dirty, if you will, back in 2020, and it's time for him to, in essence, uh, go for the encore and try and and reclaim uh, some of what happened in 2020. But beyond all of that, okay, think about if you're Ron DeSantis for a second, and, and you know, I'm not a, I'm not an advisor, Ron DeSantis. Shockingly, I'm not. I'm just a you know a journalist with a toupee. Actually, it's not a toupee. This is my natural hair. I'm 57. Thank you very much. 
but look, if I'm a if I'm a strategist for Ron DeSantis, and I know he wants to run, I mean it's obvious. But I'm thinking to myself, whoa, 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 hold on for a second. Can you not wait two more years? In essence, after 2024, you'll be governor of Florida a second time, and then at that point, Trump will be off the scene or in the White House. Either way. And then you've got a clean slate because let's be honest, if you're Ron DeSantis and I'm the strategist, I'm telling him this. Do you really want to be the next Lion Ted? Do you really want to be the next Little Marco? I mean, this whole thing about Trump saying Ron DeSantis sanctimonious, and by the way, which I thought was actually pretty funny. And I know there are a lot of people who said, oh, please don't attack Ron DeSantis. He's great. Hey, you know what? Look, folks, this is what Trump does. He's a puncher. Yes, he's a counter puncher. He's also a puncher. He's going to fight. He sees DeSantis as a threat. And so if we think Ron DeSanctimonious is some sort of, uh, you know, ooh, wow, a big uh, big insult to, to Ron DeSantis, give me a break. I mean, that's child's play at this point. I mean, R Donald Trump's got plenty up his sleeve. So if you're sitting there in Florida, somewhere, somewhere near a palm tree, and you're Ron DeSantis, why in the world are you getting in this race? And I know you look and you look at the mirror and you see the poll numbers and people say, oh, you, you got it. And Fox is behind you and the donors are behind you. You're going to do it. OK, but here's the problem with that. Not only not only would you be called, in essence, the lying Ted of 2024. In other words, there's a lot of stuff that Trump will brand you with. Why do you want to be branded? Number one. But more than that. And here is here is DeSantis's biggest dilemma. OK, if he goes ahead and runs. Trump's going to criticize him. We know this. And it's going to be in spades. It's going to come daily, weekly, whatever you want to call it. Well, guess what? Ron DeSantis being an alpha male, just like Trump, he's not going to take it lying down. He's going to fire back. Well, guess what? When you fire back at Donald Trump, you're attacking not just Donald Trump, but you're attacking MAGA. They love the MAGA king. They love him. So DeSantis has an interesting dilemma here. It's not just that he's going to get branded by Trump. OK, but the other part of the problem here is that, indeed, he, when he attacks Trump, is attacking MAGA, the very voters, the actual voters that he's going to need in a primary and potentially a general election. So, look, he can think that the polls look good and people want to change and they're tired of Trump and go for it. Give it a shot. But the difference here is it looks much better on paper than it does in practicality. And in practicality, you're going to get into it with Trump. And as I just laid out there, you're going to be attacking MAGA because when you, when you attack Trump, you cannot distance between attacking Trump and attacking MAGA. Because if you say anything about Trump as it relates to the election or let it go or, you know, whatever it is, policies, well, guess what? MAGA supports all of that. So then in essence, you're attacking MAGA. So if DeSantis runs, it'll be interesting to watch how he goes about attacking Trump because it can't be one-sided or he'll get crushed. So anyhow, those are some of my thoughts on that. Well, look, we have a lot to discuss on this podcast. Uh, we're going to be joined by Liz Harrington, President Trump's spokeswoman here in just a moment, uh, where she'll give us her take on, on some of what's going on. Uh, but, but there's so much to get to. And I, what I thought was interesting is, well, there's a lot that I thought was interesting, but, but what I thought in terms of the announcement itself, a lot of people are saying it was low energy. Um, well, you know, when you don't have a gold escalator and you're not running for the first time or you're not president of the United States, it's going to be a little bit more low energy, if you will, uh, than normal. But listen, so what? OK, it wasn't about low energy. Right. It was about what he said and what he didn't say. And what I noticed, and this will be interesting. I'm going to talk to Liz about this in a moment. You want to be very careful. I think people want to see a forward looking vision. They don't want to look back. Now, hear, hear me on this. I'm not saying that he shouldn't bring up election integrity and uh, the, everything going on with voting in this country and, and the fraud and, and the, the early voting, the mail-in voting, and the fact that uh, Democrats have, uh, in essence, rigged the system to their way and Republicans need to do a lot more. He needs to do all of that. And I think that needs to be the focus rather than, you know, in Arizona in 2020, they're killing me or Mike Pence in January. Forget all that. OK, I, look. The folks that agree with you on that, you already have, right? That's MAGA. They agree with you. MAGA by itself isn't going to win you the election. You're going to have to somehow get some independence. You are. You just are. 
You're going to have to get those Rust Belt voters that you got in 2016 and all that. So you're going to have to appeal, in essence, to them to say, I'm looking forward, not back. And I think if you can do that, I think that'll be extremely helpful. So look, I've got a lot more to talk about. I'm losing my voice. I've done like a half a podcast and I'm already losing my voice. Clearly, I need lozenges or I need a primary care appointment with my physician. Uh, look, by the way, speaking of physicians, I've decided with Donald Trump running, I'm going to I've got to up my meds. Uh, there is not even a question about it that I'm going to my primary care and saying, hey, I need to go from 20 milligrams, if you know what I'm saying, up to 40 milligrams, because this is going to be a wild ride. And if DeSantis gets in, oh, my gosh. And Mike Pompeo coming out today, by the way, I don't know if you've seen some of his tweets. He's saying we need a leader that's, in essence, looking f- forward and not relitigating the past. I mean, so he's saying some stuff. <sighs> so it's going to get um, it's going to get nasty, shockingly. And uh, we'll see what happens. All right. Uh, We're going to take a quick break and then we'll come back with Liz Harrington in a moment. All right. Well, 2022 is going to be a critical year for America. AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens, along with their nearly 2 million members. The fight to stop out-of-control spending in the president's Build Back Better scheme is far from over, and Congress is plotting more legislation that could hurt our seniors. The midterm elections will be a battle for freedom versus socialism. Unlike liberal groups, AMAC is America's conservative, action-oriented 50-plus organization fighting hard every day here in Washington and across the nation for our seniors. So I'm urging you to choose AMAC now. You will receive all of the great membership benefits, including AMAC discounts on hotels, travels, and restaurants, and your membership will support your conservative values. So go to amac.us forward slash Ellis. That's amac.us forward slash E-L-L-I-S to become an AMAC member now. All right, uh, let's uh, join. Uh, sh- join. Listen to me. I, I, I don't know podcast lingo. Let me. Let's join Liz Harrington. Already in progress. Just kidding. There she is, Liz Harrington. How are you? Good to see you. Hey, David. I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm great. So my burning question, I guess, obviously, is uh, h- how's the food at Mar-a-Lago? By the way, I've had the food at Mar-a-Lago. It is good. I can confirm that. It, it's pretty good, isn't it? The food at all of President Trump's uh, properties is always amazing. Everything's amazing at all of his properties. So you'll you'll never be disappointed. That's right. So it's like make food great again. Or actually, he doesn't <laughs> need to make food great again. I got you. All right. So let's talk about uh, this announcement. Uh, and, you know, this is typical stuff here. The media is like, he's got no chance. I, had a, I watched CNN last night and I was like, OK, wait, hold on. I got to up my meds because this stuff is uh, out of control. I mean, seriously, it's it's like I'm watching a broken record. It's like 2016 again. So, so what's, your, what's the sense there at, uh, at Trump Central, if you will, Liz? Well, that's right. It's deja vu all over again, right? I mean, that's how it really does feel. It's like no one yeah. has learned. Uh, no one has a memory. No one remembers uh, how all the forces, all the media, even Fox, even News Corp, all those publications were against President Trump in 2015 and 2016. Um, And really, quite frankly, they never really changed. It's just they kind of shifted, I guess, when it was acceptable uh, during his first term. And of course, now all the knives are coming out again. And, you know, that's fine. Uh, He's used to it. Um, But they don't have the people on their side. I think that's why there's so many forces out against him. President Trump is his own man. He's not owned by any of these globalists or these elites, this corporate media, the billionaires. Uh, He doesn't need them. Uh, The only thing he needs is the people and the people need President Trump. And that's why he's running again, uh, because we need to save our country. And things are really bad, David. You know, you cover it so well on your shows. I mean, it's the people are feeling it and they need hope and we need someone who can actually go in. He's already proven himself once before. He knows exactly what to do. He knows where all the landmines are and he will get the job done. So, so Liz, let me ask you about the voting uh, or election integrity and all that. So important. And, and I got it, but, but I wonder if uh, the challenge, or at least you got to make sure that, it's centered on the future rather than the past. I, you know, because look, 
here's the thing. I mean, you know the deal. And, Ma- and the MAGA folks, you, were, you had them at hello, right? I mean, so Trump doesn't need to do any of this whole thing about, you know, 2020 and look what happened in January 6th. And I can't believe they did. He doesn't need to do that because MAGA agrees with him anyhow. But he needs to kind of reach some other voters that, that are kind of done with that. They want to move on. But he can speak to some other uh, issues and, and I wonder if that's the way to do it. In other words, talk about paper ballots, talk about election integrity, talk about fixing the system. That's the future, but not rehashing 2020, even though I know he's going to want to do it. And you know, he's going to do it at some point. I'm not saying he's going to be perfect on this, but I do think he needs to kind of look towards the future without neglecting the past. Well, to a couple of things on that. I mean, you can't really know where you're going unless you know where you've been, right? And you have to learn sure. from what's yeah. happened. Uh, and he really has taken all that in. And the the reality remains, if we don't fix uh, what happened in 2020, we're not probably going to have uh, a country left, right? <laughs> if we keep having these sham elections, which you know, there's so many ways to rig it. I mean, just look at this cryptocurrency scandal. I mean, it's absolutely right. obscene. And so, and you also have to look at 2022. I mean, we're there are lawsuits being filed as we speak. And there's one in Delaware County, Pennsylvania, where they're literally seeing uh, the numbers being fudged in real time. When it comes to the number of mail-in ballots, they said that were sent out. All of a sudden, that number changed. It went down. How does that happen? And then, of course, with voter registrations, too, you have people that they claim voted and then all of a sudden they're removed from the roll. I mean, this is happening all across the country and people are paying attention. They're taking their agency. They're acting. And that's what President Trump made clear. Look, he obviously he knows what happened. It happened to him. It happened to the entire country. But it's going to take the country, it's going to take the people to fix all of these problems. It's not just going to be President Trump. That's why he said his campaign, it's it's not his campaign, it's our campaign. And I think that's really important because yeah. the more people and the more time goes on, the more people are waking up to that fact. And it's not just going to be MAGA people. It's not just going to be Republicans. It's Democrats. I mean, you saw in 2022, the disenfranchisement, the different... I've heard, I hear about races all the time affecting Democrats where their results, you know, were changed and shifted um, days after the election. So this is a continuing issue. It has to be addressed and it's going to continue to be addressed on the local level, the state level. And President Trump's going to lead the way on that as well. Yeah. Let me ask you um this, the whole DeSantis thing. And I know there'll be time to do all that stuff later if he gets in. He might not even run. I mean, he might, he might not run. I mean, here's, here's my view. Let me just get it off my chest and do a little soapbox stuff. I mean, first of all, I think you should stay in Florida, but, but beyond all of that, I don't think you should run. But here, here's my thing. If I'm a strategist for DeSantis, I mean, look, I, I know he sees some poll numbers that he might think are good, which whatever. Here's the point. What, and I'm going to just say this straight out. Why be the next Lion Ted or little Marco? I mean, Donald Trump is the master brander. I mean, if you, you know, Ron DeSantis, really good governor. Uh, he's got a lot going for him. Why? I mean, straight up, Liz, why taint yourself? I mean, he, you know, Donald Trump, you know, don't, don't mess around with Trump. I mean, why even get involved in that? Because Donald Trump is going to, you, you know, he's going to, he's a fighter. He's going to, he's going to talk about stuff and why even go there? And here's the other thing. If, if Ron DeSantis gets in the race and starts criticizing Donald Trump, that's like criticizing MAGA. So, so he's, he's got a problem there because you, you can't, you can't disassociate Trump and MAGA. So that's a, he's kind of in a, in a pickle, if you will, as my dad would say from like 1945. He's kind of in a pickle here. So anyhow, there's a lot of other reasons why I don't think you should get in. Uh, but I think he's the future, not the present. But I'm just curious to get your take on that. I know we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit because he might not even run. But what are your thoughts about that? Well, look, I mean, Ron DeSantis has the campaign ad, right? That has, you know, the baby in the Make America Great Again onesie. Right. I mean, this is, he what, he came from President Trump. He President Trump, you know, really took a chance on Ron, you know, he was very low in the polls in Florida, gave him the endorsement and he shot up. And, and that was great. I mean, and he's done, you know, a fine job. But at the same time, you know, he's being endorsed as supposedly the top pick by Paul Ryan. So, I mean, that tells you a lot. I mean, is that very MAGA? I don't 
think so. <laughs> um, but we'll have to see. But look, I think of most of it's a media distraction. We want a unified Republican Party. And the fact remains that Donald J. Trump is the leader of the Republican Party. He's a very strong leader. He has vast uh, majority support of, among the Republican Party. Their approval is always way high in the 90 percent. So, I mean, the people, the voters, that's who it should be about. Right. And the people want President Trump. And so, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens. But President Trump, clearly he's uh, tried and tested and true. And we, he's already delivered. And we know he can make America great again because he already has. Yeah. And I guess just to wrap up in about a minute or so, give me your answer on this, on the culture war stuff. I call it the culture war stuff, but, you know, critical race theory and the school board stuff and the uh, men competing against women and all that stuff. Because I got to tell you, Liz, straight up, uh, you to me, uh, me to you, whatever you want to call it, uh, that's a winning ticket because that that transcends politics. That that goes to an independent woman who couldn't give a rip about politics, who couldn't care about Trump or Biden, who's going to, a, who who's, puts their kid in school and sees the gay ABCs for their kindergartner goes, wait a minute, hold on, common sense here. Wait, this doesn't make any sense. I mean, to me, that se- parental rights seems to be a, a, an important and winning ticket for the Republican Party and definitely Donald Trump going forward. We talked about it last night. I mean, can you imagine that we even have to say we have to defend parental rights? I mean, you know, something's gone seriously wrong when there's literally the other side says that you don't have a right to know about what they're not just what they're learning in school, but what gender uh, they're trying to change your kid into. It's insane. And absolutely. I mean, who better to take on this political correctness on steroids than the man who has never been politically correct. And that's a great thing because he speaks his mind, he speaks his truth, and he knows common sense. That's why he's been so successful. And remember, critical race theory, this is what President Trump brought the issue to the uh, really the front, forefront. He was the one that exposed it in the federal government and rooted it right. out, uh, rooted it out of the military. It is sinister. It is disgusting. And President Trump saw it and he said, no way, not in our United States of America. So these are his issues. Uh, He's absolutely going to be successful on them. And he's really the one who's positioned to take them head on because he knows what common sense is. He knows what the common man wants and, and he connects with them. And he knows what we all want is our country back. We want a safe secure, prosperous America, just like we had under President Trump. And we can do even more. Uh, That's what was so inspiring about his speech. You know, get rid of all this nonsense and get back to the basics. And there's nothing America can't do. And that's why uh, we're just so excited for him to have made this announcement. Hey, Liz, thanks for joining us. Uh, by the way, I'm not Jenna Ellis, FYI. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. But, uh, but thanks, for, thanks for being here, though. I really appreciate it. You, by the way, you, you are so great. Uh, you, you're like the best spokeswoman. Really, you are. And I mean this sincerely. And here's why. Because you authentically, you, you authentically believe everything you're saying. I mean, you, you, you're straight up. And, Guilty. And, you know, you, you, yeah, it's like you, it's a kind of an easy, not an easy job. It's not an easy job. But it's easy when you believe what you're saying rather than, you know, having to you know, do the whole crazy clown world stuff. So thank you. Absolutely. No, thanks, David. It's always good to see you. Legacy Precious Metals is the company that I trust to give you good and patient counsel for investing in your retirement. The Biden administration has caused a financial crisis and they have no clue how to fix it. Oil prices have skyrocketed and when oil prices go up, not only do your expenses go up, but the cost of transportation and shipping spikes, leading the prices of goods to rise. And when And we are already seeing record inflation. That's the last thing that we need. Our economy is in trouble and you need to take steps to protect yourself. If all your money is tied up in stocks, bonds, and traditional markets, you may be vulnerable. So gold is one of the very best ways to protect your retirement. No matter what happens, you own your own gold. It's real, it's physical, and it's always been valuable since the dawn of time. Call Legacy Precious Metals today at 866-528-1903 or visit them online at Legacy PM Investments. 
legacypminvestments.com. That's legacypminvestments.com where you can download the free investor's guide. You can also go to my Facebook page, Jenna Ellis. I am a public figure on Facebook and I just posted yesterday a really great interview with the president of Legacy Precious Metals who is discussing why you need to start your retirement account even if you're in your 20s or 30s. There is always a great time to protect your retirement and invest just like you want to protect your health over the long term. So go to Legacy Precious Metals at LegacyPMInvestments.com or call 866-528-1903. MyPillow is having their biggest sheet sale of the year. You all have helped build MyPillow into the amazing company that it is today. Now Mike Lindell, the inventor and CEO, wants to give back exclusively to you, his listeners. The Percale bed sheet set is available in a variety of colors and sizes, and they are all on sale. So for example, the queen size is regularly priced at $89.98 but is now only $39.98 with our listener promo code, Jenna, J-E-N-N-A. So order now because when they're gone, they're gone. The Percale bed sheets are breathable and have a cool and crisp feel. These come with a 10-year warranty and a 60-day money-back guarantee, so don't miss out on this incredible offer. There's a limited supply, so be sure to order now. You can call one 800 564 8475 and use the promo code Jenna or go to mypillow.com forward slash Jenna. You can click on the radio listener square and use the promo code Jenna. That's J E N N A. Thank you so much to all of Mike Lindell's listeners and listeners of this podcast for making sure to support MyPillow and using our exclusive listener promo code Jenna. That's J E N N A.